Hello and welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. Now this is the show where we answer your questions. So if you do have any questions, please comment, hashtag GMBN Tech, and we will get to them when we can. Now you might have noticed this is my first time home all alone, no dodster with the watchful eye to make sure that I don't put a toe wrong. So let's fingers crossed. Now I do have a really bad throat. I've been drinking lemon tea by the absolute bucket load, but I'm sure as the show goes on, it might get a little bit bad. So please be patient. I'll do my best. And um, yeah, thank you for your understanding. So on with the show. So we have the first question, and actually we don't have a name for this one. It might have got not correctly copy and pasted, so I apologize for that. But it is somebody wondering if when they go tubeless, or how they go tubeless with the rims that are specified for Schrader valves. So that means where the pressed valve is normally quite narrow, the Schrader is, is a larger diameter, so the hole is bigger in the rim. Now, similar to your standard Presta tubeless setup, you can just get the tubeless valves and then it's all pretty self-explanatory from there. I remember, and I think it's only maybe in the last three, four years, I'd say tubeless has got really reliable in terms of um, uh, side load, you know, you don't, you don't burp as much. And a very common thing to do, you'd be get a maybe a 24 inch tube, I think it would be, and with a Schrader valve, and it'd be you sit really tight to the rim, so you'd slice along the tube and have it overlapping, install the tire, and then cut the excess, the flange off and that'd be a really, really good way to go tubeless. So that's another alternative if you cannot get hold of any um, Schrader valves. But like I said, I'm pretty sure, I did a quick Google, and they're relatively easy to find. Next, we have a question from Hargrid Ford, and he says, Fox the TV channel, Fox the clothing brand, and Fox the suspension, are they all the same brand? Don't think the TV channel's involved in it, but the old story goes that it's Fox head was one brother, and Fox Tail was the suspension company, and it was actually come from the same family, and they split it off into two. Um, I don't know if it's an urban myth, but I'm pretty sure that one has got some, uh, got some uh, substance to it. Um, but maybe somebody in the comments can correct me if I'm perhaps getting it a little bit wrong. Um, and it's often why, I've heard it before, people wondering why you see a lot of, say, Fox Head clothing uh, riders ride with, say, RockShox or SRAM, and it's because they're two companies completely different to one another. Next, we have a question from Sebastian Gonzalez, and he says, do you know why limit screws in the derailleur don't use Allen heads? Um, it's a good question. Allen heads are becoming more prevalent, um, even on road, road mechs, you're seeing them more, and I really like them. I like how everything is converging to kind of one standardized tool, the Allen key. Um, SRAM still uses, well, use a three, uh, three mil Allen key. I think it's largely to protect the derailleur from the end user who perhaps can get more torque through an Allen key than they could a, a screwdriver. Um, some people, when they don't know how to set up their mechs, and I've seen it before, just keep on dialing, <laughs> dialing in those limit screws. And um, yeah, I think that it, it's probably like that. As far as I'm aware, the Shimano ones actually don't use a Phillips. I think it's like some Japanese standard, but that's something for people to get into in the comments. I'm sure somebody knows. But yeah, I, th I think it's good that it's going to Allen heads. But like I said, it's to, I think it's to limit the amount of torque you can put through the system potentially. Um, but we'll go on to another question because I don't want to get bogged down in pedantics. And we have a question from Shell. And they say, I have a Trek Cobia lying around that I don't ride anymore. How hard would it be to convert to a single speed bike? And what are the advantages of a single speed bike, if any? Well, in terms of converting it, it's relatively simple. You can actually get really kind of convenient kits, which would include your cog for the back, the spacers for the free hub, and a tensioner. If you're running a bike that doesn't have um, single speed specific dropouts where they're horizontal, you would normally have to run a tensioner. Um, and that basically just means that the chain doesn't slip as you're putting in large drive. Then you need to talk about, well, think about gearing. So if you're running a triple at the front, um, usually the 32 tooth, which is the middle chain ring, pairs up really nicely to about a 20 tooth on the back. Um, but that is personal preference and it depends where you ride. The benefits, I mean, I like riding single speed and I have done in the past, just because it's actually a lot of fun and it makes 
something that perhaps you've ridden loads of times a bit more interesting because you have to think so much more when you're climbing. Um, and also as a winter bike, it's fantastic because it's so easy to maintain. There's only one gear to worry about and it always runs well, relatively smooth. So there are some benefits, but for me, the reason I would do it or I have done in the past is just a fun thing. It, um, it can make riding quite flat trails a bit more interesting. Now we have a question from Gabriel. He says, Hi guys, I have a good question for you in the creaking department. You know a way a chain can make a creaking noise when it's almost new. I want to mention the fact that I'm using WD-40 dry lube before each ride. I know it's the chain because I replace it with a friend's chain to check that. And yeah, that's the cause. Well, it can be a bit of a frustrating one. Sometimes when you're, I've had it before, we we'll say a chain ring isn't paired up nicely to the chain and it's actually getting a bit of ch um, chain suck off the bottom as it, as it goes through its um, revolution. And that can sound a lot like a creaking. Um, I've also had it before. It's actually using really nice KMC chains, which are fantastic quality. But for some reason, after maybe half an hour, 45 minutes riding on with dry loop, some of them would start to kind of creak in quite a metallic sort of grinding way. And they just worked a lot better with wet loop. Um, so my advice to you would be to give it a really good degrease, use some wet lube, wipe the excess off, and then use your dry lube more regularly. Um, you might find that that kind of good reset is, uh, is enough to hopefully give you a silent ride. Now we have a question from Arcos26, and they say, Hi team, amazing channel. Good start. Can I build a rear brake from different components such as Shimano Dior Calipers, Hayes Stroke Lever, and No Name Hose. They operate with different oils. Yes, you're right, they do. Can it cause any issues? Well, yes, basically, it can and it will. You might, the brakes to, together might, you know, they might pair up in terms of fitment, but when you put oil in them, it will cause you issues to do with your seals. A lot of the time, mechanically, they aren't actually all that different. For instance, I know that some companies that make very bespoke road calipers will actually say to you when you buy your brakes, do you want the mineral or dot? And then you just, they just change the seals accordingly. Um, but yeah, you, you sadly, you can't, you can't mix and match. Some people within say a Magura and a Shimano both use mineral fluid. So you do hear of people using the Shigura, which is a Magura caliper, and a Shimano lever, which is supposedly um, they're going to give you the, the power of Magura, but the feel of Shimano. In my experience, seeing people do it, it normally ends up with an exploded hose off the lever and some very terrifying screams. <laughs> but that's just, um, yeah, that's another issue when you cross over stuff. Um, things like a Shimano use a servo wave. So as it goes through its stroke, it actually gets more powerful towards the end. Whereas something like a Magura, example, actually will get weakened as it goes through its stroke. So yeah, that's another reason you don't want to be mixing it up. Sometimes those engineers really do know what they're talking about and um, give credit where it's due and sometimes sticking to the system isn't a bad idea. Now we have a question from Ethan Pendlebury and he says, I still run 26 inch wheels and love it, but I've been having issues when looking for a new fork. I want to get another 140 mil travel fork, but everything I've found has been 100 mil dirt jump forks. Is there anything I can get to get 140 mil fork for a 26er with a modern damper? Well, I did a bit of looking and I did find some um, Fox forks, 140 mil with the grip damper, which is the entry level damper, but it's actually fantastic. Um, but yeah, you're kind of boxed into a corner by the way the market's gone, which is very frustrating. Um, you're right. the the forks that do come out around 26, yeah, those pike dirt jumps, whatever, which probably isn't quite what you're after. I know plenty of people that have either run 29 inch forks with 27 wheels or 27 forks with 26 wheels. It's not actually that much and um, it would actually future proof you if you if you changed your frame one day. But yeah, it is, it is annoying and I do sympathize with that. Um, I would also suggest talking to your Fox or talking to your local bike shop who in turn can talk to their, say, Fox or Rock Shocks importer because there's every chance they might be able to get you something. Um, like I said, I found some on the internet reasonably quickly. 
But yeah, it's a bit, bit of a nuisance that. Um, I would probably just go for 27.5 forks and know that on a muddy day, they're not gonna get scratched from mud clearance issues and be happy with that. So that's it from the show, but please do keep your questions coming in and, um, and we will do our best to work through them. Now, I did a kind of a how-to on how to keep your bike running quietly, specifically referring to cables. Um, so kind of a nerdy, but pretty in-depth look. And so if you wanna check that out, click down here. And Doddy did a really, really, really cool bike check on that Foes, which is just, yeah, jewel worthy. So please click here to check that one out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up just down below. Cheers.